Tom. Hi, Tom. I'm Andrea. Well, hi, Andrea. Hi, Tom. Where are we? We are in the other castle. <laughs> well, this is where we are. It's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful home built out of video games. Out of video games. Out of video games. You take the cartridges out. They're waterproof. It's great. We don't even have, like, a single hard copy of a video game anymore, I don't think. I have my hard copies of my Pokemon games from the Game Boy Color for nostalgia. And, like, all those ones for, um, the 3DS, too. We have a few on the 3DS. We have a few, but I still am meaning to sell them. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, the game, the one game that I have as a cartridge that I really love is Pokemon Gen 2. It was, um, gold. And it, I think it's, um, like, the gold heart fire or whatever fucking bullshit they put out right. as the reissue and i have it and i just found out that they're gonna re-release it as a dlc in september so i'm just gonna sell it now because i don't care yeah it's just so much easier to download games now it is i'm like as long as my account doesn't get hacked and wiped i'm cool right you and, have those games forever yeah and i doubt that's ever gonna happen because like my nintendo account is so old that it's from like usernames that i never use anymore right. so like if it wasn't for autosave, I'd never be able to get into it. So I, I should probably change that, actually, now that I think about it. All right. Well, this week. Yes. I was inspired by something you said in a previous episode. Ooh. In how you said you love the Telltale series. I really love the Telltale series. And one of those things that about the Telltale series, if, if people never played them before, they're more of an interactive movie than they are a video game. And, like, just speak on that, you know, growing up. Our generation particularly loved those choose your own adventure books. I always loved the storytelling aspect of it. I think it's so cool that you can take these characters, fall in love with them, and see them in different circumstances within the same storyline and have that storyline move around. And I don't have great dexterity. Like, you can do a first person shooter. I watched you play Overwatch for hours last night, but I have a lot of issues telling, fathoming my brain, telling my thumbs to do shit. Right. So, the Telltale series is. It, I wouldn't even say that the gameplay is watered down because the gameplay is still very complex, but right. it's more logical and like thought provoking and pieces like that. It's almost closer to like an Ace Attorney game rather than like I just I have no patience for first person shooters, so I don't have the dexterity for it. But Telltale is so fascinating, and wonderful, and so well done that it's amazing for me. Well, in those, you know, story comes first, and then the gameplay kind of comes second. Yes, I adore that. Head over heels, love it. Which I always love a good story. So. Oh, yeah. So this game, this is from an early, early version of those games. Okay. Uh, this was made by a company called ReadySoft. They were famous for a couple of games. Uh, one was called Dragon's Lair, and the other one was called Space Ace. I've heard of Dragon's Lair. Is that the one that looked like cartoons? It was a cartoon, yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. And Space Ace was pretty much the same thing, just it was in outer space. Sounds awesome. Uh, those games were created, uh, well, the, the cartoon aspect to it was made by Don Bluth. If you're not familiar with Don Bluth. A Bluth boy? Not a Bluth boy. Not like for Arrested Development. Ugh. No, Don Bluth made the most devastating fucking cartoons of our childhoods. What the fuck? He made The Land Before Time. Oh, Littlefoot. He did American Tale. He did All Dogs Go to Heaven. I didn't care for that one. Yeah, there's a lot of death in all of those. Like, <laughs> he was the one guy that was like successful outside of Disney in animation. In ruining people's childhoods and, and, also, just and simultaneously building them. Wrecking them, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So he did the uh, animations for Dragon's Lair and Space Ace. This game came out quite a bit later and done in the exact same style. And this game is called Brain Dead 13. <laughs> and I'm assuming Brain Dead's one through twelve were not don't exist. Did not come to fruition. Okay. <laughs> no, there is no. I don't know why the number thirteen's on here. It's not a significant number in the game. Is it just punk rock to say thirteen? It must be punk rock to say thirteen because this is Brain Dead thirteen. As if we've gone through this twelve other times, but we have not. Here we go again. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um. So, ha what was the gap between this one and the other games? Like, is it significant enough, or did it just kind of trail off after the fact? Well, this game came out in 95 for DOS. Not even, like, considered PC, like, DOS. What is a DOS? I don't know what that is. DOS was the 
operating system that ran Windows. Okay. So, whereas you think Windows was the operating system, there's actually a system behind Windows that was running that operating system. Uh, well, Dragon Slayer and Space Ace, they were made for the arcade, and they were done on Laserdisc. Oh my god. So, <laughs> so people that had a Laserdisc player at home could also play this those games with their, like, controller. All of those controls are just up, down, left, and right. It really Got simplifies it. everything. It's, you know, you want your character to go left, you want your character to go right. And that's how the game works. That's as interactive as it gets. That's as interactive as it needs to be for Dragon's Lair and Space Ace. Okay, got the, it. The other thing about those games is that once you learn how the entire story goes, you can just breeze through it in one turn. Okay. And make it really easy. Brain Dead 13, this one was intended to go directly to DOS. So it was intended to be put on a floppy disk as opposed to onto a laser disk. So it wasn't going to have as high of a quality to it. So they didn't get Don Bluth to come in and do this game, but they clearly used pretty much the same animators and styles for this game. So this was not his brainchild, he didn't have his hands in it, but it's kind of just from the world of. Yeah, he never touched it. He might, I didn't look into it, he might get a producer's credit of some kind. Yeah. But he's not involved in it the way he was with the other games. Got it. And the quality shows. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> it's well animated, it's still a good cartoony thing. Also, this game was not nearly well received as Space Ace and Dragon's Lair. Okay. This one was not really popular. When it did get ported to consoles a year after it was released on DOS, the highest rating for it was on the 3DO. I don't know what that means. The 3DO was a video game system created by Panasonic. Okay. They, they tried to dip their toe into the video game market. The biggest problem with it was that it was seven or eight hundred dollars to Ooh, buy it at that time. At that time, I wouldn't spend that kind of money now. I it don't have that kind of money now. It had good graphics. It had a couple of standout games. On top of that, uh, Gex the Gecko came from 3DO at the time, and that he went on to like get a couple games out of it. Yeah, he went on PlayStation. He's and stuff. a Geico guy now. Right, his no, life's doing great. He's doing wonderful. Like after. It the, the price tag is boggling my mind, though. Like, we just got a, the PlayStation, the gold one, for less than half that? Yeah, we That's got that right around bonkers. 250 right? Bonkers. Something like that? Yeah. And I was extremely fortunate in that we had one. Holy shit. Not that we spent $800 on a video game system. I know your mama didn't drop that kind of money on a PlayStation system for you. <laughs> no, my dad worked for a company that worked with Panasonic. Oh. And they gave him one. That's cool. So they gave him one because, one, nobody was fucking buying it. <laughs> they just had a bunch, and they're like, you have a child. They were like, well, at least you have a kid who likes video games. You'll buy the games then after that. So <laughs> we'll give, like, we'll let your kid have this system for free. They cause... give you the razor to sell you the blade. Right, exactly. <laughs> yes, that's that's pretty much what they did. And, uh, Jesus Christ. I don't, you know, this was one of the games that I did have, and I played it, and it was frustrating, and I hated it, and it was a rage quit game. Oh, I'm so excited. I have come to find out that I didn't beat it, but I got really fucking close and never realized it. How infuriating is that to know now as an adult so far away from it? Yeah, because I remember the hours I spent trying to figure this thing out. Cause oh, no. The entire game's one giant maze. Okay. And you're constantly on the run, like it's like Jason Statham in the Crank movies. Like yeah, you're just okay. constantly, constantly moving. It's really unforgiving in the sense where with a Telltale game, they tell you swipe left, swipe right, go up, and if you don't hit it, then you screw up. Yeah. This one requires you to know exactly what you need to do, exactly when you need to do it, without any guidance on the screen. Yikes, so there's a lot of uh, dying and trying to remember so what to do next. So much dying in this game. <laughs> uh, we'll get into like all the different death scenes, because they at least oh, animated hundreds of death scenes. Don't worry, you'll get to see your person die a whole bunch. So many times. Oh, great. Love it. This is so funny. Like I, I Today, I just finished this recent run-through of Until Dawn, which is, if you haven't played, it's such a wonderful Telltale-esque, like, and I don't even want to say Telltale-esque, it's very different, but it's a survival horror game in a very similar fashion where you get to make your own butterfly effect choices. And your decisions affect the outcome of the game. Yeah, and you see a whole bunch of death, so There's I am, like, lot. mentally in a really great place to go into death or like and choose your own adventure. that Friday the 13th game that I was playing. Like, yeah. That one also just has a lot of really cool, unique death scenes. This game has animated it's not really bloody but Ugh. there's still a lot of killing okay 
As long as there's a lot of killing. I'm not good at that Friday the 13th game. I've thrown it on a couple times. I just, I don't, I don't have the dexterity for that either. So <laughs> it's, it's a trip. It, it is, it's tricky. I, I'm, I'm good with games like Until Dawn and the Telltale games. But this game you can play today still. No. As it was released on uh, the Apple iTunes store in 2010. For like iPad? And... For all the like touchscreen devices okay. basically. I just sold my iPad. Oh no. Oh, I, th I think you'll be okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This might be overload for it already. Yeah. So the game has two main characters. You've got pretty much just your protagonist and your antagonist, and then a bunch of like couple scattered mini characters. Your main character is Lance. Lance. Uh, he's a computer repairman, and this is like long, long before the Geek Squad or anything. <laughs> so this was like an actual computer repair person that came to your house and like, you know, he's like a plumber, but for your computer. Was he sexy or was he frumpy? No, he's, he's, he's not frumpy or anything. He's, you know, like 21, 22, skinny guy. Looks like uh, Jay from Jay and Silent Bob. Okay. But he's got long orange hair instead, and he wears like a baseball cap. He's got like a vest and his pants. Like he's got like a Aww. uniform on. Sounds like a tall, dorky Marty McFly. Yeah, a little bit. And uh, but he's supposed to be a little bit cooler, like like a fast stoner, if that makes sense. They didn't okay. they didn't make his voice like slow and like hey man. Yeah. But he's like hey man. You know, like that kind All of right. thing. All right. Like if Seth Green grew a foot. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Or, or two. Like. He's a small man. He's a small man, and Lance is, is he looks tall. Lanky and weird. Got right. It. He's lanky and weird. Uh, and then the other main character, this is the one that they used in, like, all their advertising. His character's name is Fritz. Fritz! He's the main antagonist. He's a silent, like, Igor-style character. So he's, like, tiny. He's about four feet tall. He's all green. He's got, like, a really jutted out mouth with, like, one tooth sticking out of it. I love him already. He's got, like, he wears, like, all purple and stuff. <laughs> but then he's got these two golden hooks for hands. He's a monster. He's totally a monster. So the blues present to you someone with hooks for hands. Got it. Following? Here. <laughs> That's good. That was a, that was a good catch. <laughs> it's driving me crazy already. But those hooks can be changed out for different weapons. Like a larger hand or maybe well, a... I, You know what I was thinking of was like a hook when he has that baseball glove attachment. Yeah. When he had to touch that on. <laughs> but this is a lot more deadly. He's got like oh. chainsaws and knives That's and stuff badass. like that. That's badass. Yeah. Oh, I'm stoked. He's far more violent. Cool. Love um. It. Okay, so let's get right into the story now. Yes, please. We are now going into story time. Tell me about Lance. What he's up to. The opening of the game... You don't get to play the game till about six or seven minutes in. I hate that. So it's a long cartoon that we open up on, okay? Now the setting is in this like ancient, spooky, like spindly castle. Love it. It's made almost entirely out of spires. Like it's like Tim Burton meets Dr. Seuss. Okay. Everything's like really thin. It doesn't look like it should be able to hold up the weight of things, but you know, it can because it's a cartoon. Right. And it's way up high on this cliff and the cliff is like... If a cliff was a peninsula, like, sticking out over the edge of, like, nothing, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, three feet thick, so it doesn't look like it should hold up an entire castle, but it does. Got it. Okay? Totally. Behind it is the largest moon in, like, the history of moons. It takes right. up, like, three quarters of the screen. <laughs> it's, it's the moon from Bruce Almighty. <laughs> right. It's pulled all the way down. <laughs> it's right there. Yeah. Now, an explosion occurs in one of the spires, and green and purple smoke comes billowing out of it, and the, the camera, like, zooms in on the castle, and this is where we meet Fritz for the first time. He's the main bad guy, but in the way that Darth Vader is the main bad guy in Star Wars. Darth Vader okay. is really the henchman to the Emperor. Right. Fritz is really the henchman to this character named Dr. Nero Neurosis. You you can't be evil unless you're born with a cool name, you know. Right, and <laughs> like I feel like there should just be a nurse at the do at the hospital who's like, maybe you shouldn't name him Ed Nigma. Ed How about <laughs> Steve Nigma? <Steven>. Steve. Like, <laughs> I know Edward's a family name, but don't you think he's gonna grow up to murder a bunch I of just people? Feel like you're asking for trouble with this name. Yeah, like just one fact. Like you know how they. Like, newspapers have people that edit and check for spelling errors and stuff. Just check for murders. Just check for murder names. Yeah. Charlie Manson? Mm, you sure you don't like Ed? <laughs> we have the name card made up. Just take it. It's fine. Right. All right, so Fritz is running through the castle, and he runs into a room called the Schematic Room, and it's pitch black. 
He turns on a light, and there's a giant aquarium-looking thing that lights up in the center of the room. Baller. Inside is Dr. Nero Neurosis. He is a giant brain <laughs> with just eyeballs, like, there. <laughs> and about 12 feet of brainstem hanging out the back. Ew! And he's floating in this, like, you know, liquid Gross. and shit. Uh, he tells Fritz that something is wrong and that Fritz needs to fetch the schematic 13. Now, <laughs> is it not that he's not inside of a body? Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot wrong, Fritz! There's, there's so much wrong. And yeah, the fact that he's not inside the body, it raises some questions later. Like, why? I guess this is, like, I just see now that it was schematic 13. So that's, like, the only connection to number 13 that I can find in the game is... Schematic 13. And this is called Brainwash? Brain Dead. Brain Dead. Brain Dead 13. Okay. Okay. I was like, if it's Brainwash, then maybe he's just, like, chilling in the tub. <laughs> no? Okay. So Fritz turns around, and there are, like, thousands of scrolls just, like, haphazardly, <laughs> like, piled up behind him. It's hard being an executive assistant. <laughs> and Fritz just looks at it like, what the fuck, man? And, and the brain's like, it's the red one, Fritz. They're all white. <laughs> So Fritz is digging around for the red one, and the brain talks about, like, his big master plan. He doesn't say what his master plan is, he just talks about that he has a master plan. And then Fritz finally finds the red one, and he lays it out in front of the, on the table in front of the brain. Now, the interior of this schematic 13, it's not red like the rest of it, it's white like graphing paper. Okay. And it looks like it was created by Kevin in Home Alone. <laughs> It's, like, all done with crayon. It's all animated. <laughs> it's got, uh, like, these Rube Goldberg devices, like, showing, like, things, like, falling on everybody. <laughs> and my question is, we've got Fritz, who has hooks for hands, <laughs> and this disembodied brain. Who the fuck drew this? Like, there's only one other character that we're going to meet, like, later in it, but I can tell you with certainty, they didn't help draw this. <laughs> Actually, considering that, I think it's actually pretty impressive that they he was able to hook some crayons and like maybe he stuck the crayon through the hook. He was able to like point the hook or the crayon on the edge of it. There's that. There is that. Um, but but the no. catalyst for the story. We'll we'll get to the catalyst and that will raise even more questions. <laughs> even more than how does the brain talk? Right. Because, I mean, like, I'm assuming this is just a disembodied voice coming out around a brain, or does he have a mouth on the brain? No, it's a disembodied voice. And I can tell okay. you that, like, I know as we sit in this closet that we don't have the highest quality recording <laughs> device, but yeah. neither did they. Oh. And they didn't hire somebody who was great at doing the voice for Dr. Neuroneurosis. Oh, like, no. it's a very lazy performance. <laughs> really phoned it in there he, he might have called it in genuinely literally. yeah he might have actually and this is 95 this isn't a cell phone like high quality recording this is this is like get off the computer daddy needs the phone <laughs> oh no yeah fritz is looking over the plan and he puts his hook down in it and starts dragging it across the whole fucking thing ripping it to shreds oh no and this upsets the brain because he's like you're ruining my master plan. <laughs> that I drew with all these crayons out of chilies. His whole thought process is, I need a proper pair of hands. So let's kidnap somebody and make them do this for us. Which, again, how did they get everything drawn? How do they have this castle built when they haven't had any hands to deal with until now? <laughs> it's only now that he's like, fuck, I need somebody with some hands. <laughs> this just occurred to me, everyone. <laughs> but, you know... Logic in video games and stories and cartoons is the is, reason we have a podcast. Is the reason we're here today. Yep, love it. So in his head, he's in his head. He doesn't have a head in his brain. <laughs> in his aquarium tank, where all his shits floating around. He decides that a computer expert is going to be the best person to handle all of this. So this at least dates it in the eighties, nineties ish. To be like, okay, we have people that are hired specifically to learn about computers and stuff. So and they're usually nerdy people. Yeah, because I, I imagine this to be kind of like medieval sci-fi, and then we're just adding this real-world element of people who understand computers in there. It would be like watching Frankenstein and him calling the computer repairman to come fix his computer. <laughs> and just being like, wait, why do you have all this other equipment if you have computers what? <laughs> There's no sign that this is taking place in modern era at all. Yeah, except for that Other than the fact that, that he wants to call a computer repairman. That's great. So they call out the computer repairman, and he tells Fritz to, like, prepare for his arrival. And Fritz just, like, looks around menacingly. He attaches a sword to his wrist. <laughs> and he uses the sword, and he cuts this candle in half, and it 
cuts the entire scene to black. That and, shouldn't happen. Okay, anyway. And then the sword comes through the black and slices a hole through it, and then, like, guts come out of the hole, and it's the words Brain Dead 13, and that's, like, the opening title sequence. And th- I think that is actually a nice touch of gore. Yeah, it was. I'm not even mad about that It one. wasn't bloody or anything, but it looks like it's, like, guts coming out. It's, Love it, was, it. It was cute. Totally and then, it, cute. you know, it slides down the screen and goes to black. So we're on this black screen now, and this green skull smoke thing flies up across the screen. You know, it's, like, all creepy and weird. Yeah. And then from the left, we get this little Rastafarian worm. It's, like, the same colors as, like, the Rasta flag, and it's got uh, dreadlocks coming out of it, and he's, like, inching across the I'm, sc- I'm almost sad you described the Rastafarian worm. The Rastaf- Because I just kind of wanted you to say it and cruise on by and be like, by that. we're going to accept it and move along. Well, you reminded me of that little, uh, the little caterpillar in labyrinth that goes hello oh yeah you know what i'm talking about he, he looks like that and he's like Aww. creeping across the screen and then a giant freaking spider comes across and it's got a big skull on its back so it, you know it's deadly yeah and they're chasing it all over the screen and you hear voices in the background talking and it's this computer programmer lance is like hey i heard you guys have a router issue you guys want me to come check some things out so you hear like walking around and then this part was actually really neat. Lance pulls the the panel of the computer off, mm-hmm. and the camera was inside the computer the whole time. Oh, cool. And the spider and the worm were actually inside the computer, and that's him, like, pulling it off, and this is how it, they reveal the, the, like, hero of the story for the first time, was from inside the computer, looking out, and he's, like, peering down into it. That's kind of cool. I thought it was, it was you know, there's, there's some clever moments. It's not all crap. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, it did get decent reviews. Mm -hmm. It got 60s something on 3DO, and that was with a major glitch that also came with the game. Oh, At the time, they fixed it later and released a new patch for it and stuff like that. Not a patch, like, you download it, you actually had to physically go buy a new copy of the game. (laughs) But, yeah. We go outside of the, like, outside the computer, and now we're, like, looking at the room we're in. And there's this computer, it's like a supercomputer, it's like 25 feet tall, all the way up. It's just got buttons and knobs and shit everywhere. And Lance looks at it, he's like, God, what a piece of junk. <laughs> and then he just, like, says a whole bunch of nonsense jargon. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, the computer and modem. The Astro... BTS. Tur- yeah, those kinds of things. And he narrows down the problem to some broken diodes. Sure. And while he's talking about, like, all this jargon and stuff, Fritz is sitting next to him, and he pulls, like, this softball-sized booger out of his nose with his <laughs> hook. Lance looks over and he goes, hey, do you have any gum? He's like, oh, that'll work. And he just grabs the snot oh, oh my God. off the hook and puts it onto the diodes and it the whole computer fires up because that works. I swear to God, I'm dry heaving. That's so fucking gross. It was, it's I really can't nasty. Fucking de- oh my God, no. Like, I, I know you can't hear this or see it if you're listening, but Jesus Christ, I'm having a full meltdown. <laughs> I'm in a very small place and I don't like it. It's... Uh, oh my god. Yeah. Not even being dramatic. This is just who I am. And this is just me describing it. You nope. haven't even watched it. I have zero desire to watch it now. Fuck that noise. <laughs> I would rather watch all the saws. The saws. Yeah. All in a row. All in a row than think about boogers. Boogers. Oof. Lance decides to, uh, you know, write up his bill. Labor. Parts. Travel. Boogers. He's charging them for parts. <laughs> The only thing he used was Fritz's snot rocket. Yep, that'll be eight hundred dollars. <laughs> it's actually much more reasonable. It's twenty two fifty. Got it. For the for the house call, and he asks, "So who should I make the bill out to?" And that's when the the brain man, Doctor Doctor Nero, he decides to make his presence known and introduces himself like he's James Bond. Oh, great! So it's last name, first name, and then. <laughs> So deliver it to me. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm Neurosis. Dr. Nero. Neurosis. I hate everything. Right. (sighs) But like Bond. James Bond. Yeah. Yeah. Because he thinks he's... Instead of being the superhero, he's the supervillain. He's fucking a floaty Krang thinking he's like fucking James Bond villain. I love it. This is perfect. With an Igor. (laughs) And Lance takes one look at him... And mockingly asks him if he's one of those disembodied mad scientists bent on taking over the world. <laughs> that's, a, that's very on brand. It, you know, he's very accurate. And the doctor's like, wait, how, how did you know that? 
<laughs> is Lance even in this story? Like, or is Lance just a person that wandered into this crazy ass story and they're like, I guess we'll leave him in there because <laughs> he seems way too grounded for this reality. He's in a different game. Yeah, he's completely than everybody else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, he, he, um, the doctor asks him, "How did you know that?" That's exactly what I was. And he says, well, I play a lot of video games. This is like a really oh average, average storyline. Damn. Yeah, Dr. Neurosis does not take being called average very lightly. So Lance is just super meta, and no one else knows they're in a video game, but Lance is in on the joke. Lance is completely in on the joke, and not even that. He's just like, this is so basic. <laughs> You ug wearing fucking pumps and spice ass wearing bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Nero, you are just you're nothing. Yeah. This is a, this is like such a basic super villain like That's so great. He's like where's your hairless cat? Like come on. <laughs> Sit the fuck down. <laughs> well, he does have a henchman and he tells Fritz to kill him. So Fritz pushes the button and the ground surrounding Lance just explodes. Oh. And when the dust settles, He's hanging on to one lone floorboard that's, like, hanging out over a ledge. Fritz hooks up a cannon to his arm and lights the fuse. What? Right. Okay. Because, like I said, he's got all sorts. He's got a full range of, of weapons. Right. Of computer-based weapons. Of computer-based weapons. So, thinking fast, Lance yells, BOOM! And it makes Fritz look at the cannon, like, he's like, oh, it went off. And then... Oh, him saying the words, BOOM! Right. Got it. Okay. Was to convince Fritz that... His cannon arm fired. Got it. When Fritz looks up and sees that Lance is still there, he's like, wait, what happened? So, of course, he looks into the cannon and it blows up in his face. That's cute. That's very, like, Looney Tunes. It's, yeah, it's a little Tex Avery in that sense. Yeah. Okay, wait, but, like, they specifically were like, we're gonna get someone who has hands. And he said, Lance says one thing to Dr. fucking, like, panic attack. And he's like, kill him! Yeah. <laughs> Fuck my ego. Kill him now. I don't need his hands anymore. Yeah. I'm offended. We'll wait for the garbage guy to come by, pick up his body, and we'll kidnap that guy. He's got good hands. Like, right. Like this noise. At this point, That's it's personal. Sh- yeah. Okay. Got it. So Lance laughs at Fritz, and the cannonball flies high into the air and arcs back down and takes out that final floorboard that Lance was standing on. Oh, jeez. So he plummets to the depths of the castle, and Dr. Neurosis looks at Fritz and says, Sick him, boy. Ew. Fritz opens his jacket like he's machete and, like, <laughs> unveils his full arsenal of weaponry with, like, a chainsaw, a sword, a hatchet. He's got a corkscrew and then what, like, looks like just basically a tuning fork. Just in case. Just in case. And he dives in after Lance and flutters down like a bat. Oh. So this is at the that six, seven minute point. This has all been video. You have not touched any. Haven't done a damn thing yet. I'm exhausted just hearing you talk about this ridiculous ass game. We're not even in the gameplay yet. And this is where the game finally starts. Ugh. So both Lance and Fritz, they come tumbling out of a fireplace that they had apparently been falling down because that was definitely sure. not a chimney they were in before. When they come to in a pile of stuff, uh, Lance eye gouges Fritz. Ah! And this causes Fritz to use his hooks to rub his eyes. Oh my god. And he stabs himself in the eyes. And this really is Home Alone. But like, ten- A little Quentin bit. Tarantino presents medieval ass fucking <laughs> Frankenstein's monster Home Alone. I mean, still, Home Alone was very violent. It really was. Yeah, like, you wouldn't survive that. No. Kevin's- They like electrocute people and shit. Evil. Ev- he lights a guy's hair on fire. Yeah. Like, it's bad. It's anyway. fucked up kid. So, from here, the decisions you make, they don't really, like, change the way the game come like, the outcome of the game, the way, like, a Telltale does. Mm-hmm. But you do have to go to different rooms, but the order of those rooms don't necessarily matter. Okay, so you have to unlock levels one through four, but you can do them in whatever order, but you're still going to end up with the same final scenes and stuff. Right, but But also doing this is going to result in your death like hundreds and hundreds of times. (laughs) Fun. And they employ everything from Fritz to like environmental, other side characters to kill you. Like there's so many different ways. Okay. Some are creative, most are not. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's there's at least a variety. And it, it reminds me of, like, that David Pumpkin sketch on SNL. Where he's like, sketch. it's a hundred floors. They can't all be winners. <laughs> <laughs> How much of this is David Pumpkins? <laughs> and there's no other part that's like David Pumpkins. But yeah. <laughs> I would love that. Wait, can we do, a, like, a mod of this? <laughs> where it's just <laughs> it's David, all David Pumpkins. pumpkins <laughs> yeah, in all can... different rooms. Yeah, and the skeletons are both Fritz. Well, not all are winners, but there are some. So, 
Here are some of my favorite deaths throughout the game. Love it already. Okay. I love favorite deaths. Fritz puts a blender upside down on top of Lance's head, blends his head in the blender, and then drinks him. Describe my face right now. Uh, you're shocked. I am shocked. <laughs> That's fucking hysterical. Lance gets hit in the back of the head with a hammer, and his skull flies out, leaving just his head skin, like, dangling there. Oh my god, that's hysterical. Why has not not been in a movie lately? Again, there's no blood in any of these. It's just gore. But yeah, it's like it's like PG a bloodless gore. gore. It's, it's a strange thing. That's so weird. Fritz sneaks up from behind, drives his hooks into Lance's eyes, then rips his skin in half and off his body, just leaving the skeleton. That happened in Until Dawn. Yeah, it does. That's, that's how I got Matt to die in Until Dawn. Like, I was trying really hard to save Matt, and that fucking happened. And I can attest from seeing it in a recent game, that shit's fucked up. It's, it's bad. Or like when Buffy does it to, uh, what's that guy's name? Warren in, in the Buffy series. Yeah. Or is it Willow does it? Willow that. does it to Warren. Willow yeah, she takes him Warren, out to the yeah. woods and she flays him. Flays him alive. Yeah, oh, that kind so of thing. so good. A ghost flies through Lance and steals his soul, and he leaves, like, just, like, a shriveled old person. Tell me when the ghost flies through, he's holding his soul like it's a sweater he jacked off of someone's, sh- like... <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Okay, he just flies that, he's through. He's wearing his vest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, I got you now, motherfucker. Right. Uh, one character rips his spine out through his butt. I feel like we, st- we still see that occasionally in media. Every once in a while. Yeah, it's a, that's the old chestnut of the, the butt spine. A, uh, a bear rug opens its mouth as Lance is running into the room, so he just runs right into the bear's mouth, then the bear rug eats him. I love bears, that's cute. A frog tongue wraps around his head and rips it off, and the frog eats it. What kind of fucked up frog- I mean, okay. Yeah, uh, right. there's a lot of I'm decapitation. Not gonna ask like, a lot of these are decapitations. That's so funny that they were like, that's fine for kids. Yeah, a lot of it is uh, acid dumping on him and, like, leaving just bones behind, whether oh, it be, shit. like, full body or, like, an arm or a leg, you know, yeah. just just the skull. Fucking 10 Cloverfield Lane, that motherfucker. He gets eaten by a Venus flytrap. Oh, that's adorable. A magic mushroom explodes, and he has mushrooms sprout all over his body. Drugs. This this one was was the last one that I, that I wrote down. Fritz sticks his hook in Lance's head scalps him, and then wears his hair and hat as his own. Ah! I'm sorry if anyone has headphones on. That's just so gross. It gets, it, like, it goes on and on from uh, there. Like, there's so uh, many deaths. I can feel that one in the back of my neck. All oh. of which you will see hundreds of times as you progress through this game. Like, that does sound kind of awesome, but I'm also really mortified. And they always bring him back to life, like, instantly, and they, the, like, coming back to life things always have to do with the way he was killed, too. Do they, like, reverse it? Like, the guy puts his spine back up his butt? <laughs> no, it's just more like his spine, like, reappears and attaches. It's it's nothing, like, entertaining, but... How funny would it be if they were just, like, put everything back? Like, the ghost comes back and drops his soul back just on his body his and then flies back, back and is like, I got what I needed! Bye, kids! Took it for my, for my joyride. We're good. Yeah, I just wanted to take this one for a test drive. Oh, that's horrifying. I love it. So since, like... I was saying it doesn't matter which rooms you go into and what order. I'm just going to go in an order. Okay. Just because, Pick you know, one. we have to. And so these are just the different rooms and what happens. If you're listening and playing along, take a shot if you think of the right room before Tom says it. If you think of the right room? Yeah, let's get fucked up. Okay. That's probably not going to happen. Nope. All right, Lance climbs up a ladder and he comes face to face with a black cat. The cat hisses and runs, and Lance finds himself in, like, this dark attic that is shown to be a witch's lair. The witch is seen reading a book titled Human Cookery and has an actual eyeball embedded in the cover. Fun. The witch peeks her head out, and she's, like, really small. She's, like, three feet tall, and she has just one giant yellow eye with gray hair. Awesome. I don't know that the missing eye is the one that's in the cookbook, though. Huh. So she mounts her flying broom, and she starts, like, throwing pumpkin bombs like she's the Green Goblin at him. Love this so much. She chases him all over her study. In uh, one of the rooms, there's this dangling human eye. Lance takes it and just puts it in his pocket for later. <laughs> just in case. Just in case. And then he runs outside to, like, a series of bridges and stuff, and the witch is flying around the bridges, and he jumps down on top of her, and they fly around, and they collide into a wall, and uh, it looks like one of those, uh, one of those Halloween displays of the witch that, like, crashes into the tree, Yeah, with her legs sticking out. With her legs sticking out and everything, so he he wrecks her, and then he takes off running. Cool. There's a lot of loose-leaf eyeballs in this level. 
already. So many loose leaf eyeballs. Cool. Uh, you know, loose leaf body parts just all over the place. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> all right, then we come up on a door called Vivi's. Ooh. Uh, there's a big door, and it's got a neon sign outside, and it's like... Is this a sex one? No, I thought it, you know, I totally thought it was going to be like a sex dungeon kind of thing. It's something else entirely. Oh. I know. That's disappointing. But it's also within this castle. So there's like this business inside of this castle <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. It's like how that one hotel downtown has like a mall inside of it with like two stories of like just shops. There's like a liquor store. Right. There's like a just club for no randomly reason. Randomly in there. But then there's just a bunch of hotel rooms and you're like, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't fit. I'm in a strip mall that I can check into. One of these things is not like the other. And it's both. And it's both. <laughs> so Lance goes through the room. And he's in there, and there's wreaths, and there's coffins everywhere. Oh, I, I, when you said wreaths, I was like, Christmas shop! No, no. not those kinds of no. wreaths. <laughs> Lance, like, when he goes in the room, he, like, falls down on the ground. And so it does one of those things where the feet walk up to him, and he catches his eyes with the feet. And it's just, mm-hmm. like, these pairs of stilettos, and does, like, the whole pan up of the whole thing. It's, like, the skin-tight, leather-wearing vampirus with, like, gigantic boobs and no waist. Hubba hubba. Right? And she's looking into her makeup mirror, and since she's a vampire, there's no there's reflection. no reflection except for her red lips. Oh, that's cute. I like that a lot. I thought that was actually I was like, oh, that's that's really good attention to detail. That, on that that's one. a like, great little nugget. Right. I like that a lot. And then she closes the compact, and the lips stay in midair and then like flutter off like a bat. Okay, that's just but okay. It's a cartoon. It's cute. It's cute. She welcomes Lance to Vivi's funeral salon. Cute. Right? I, I was like, okay, that's pretty smart. Like Creepy Girls Club, love it. Yeah, like like my girl. She scoops you up and puts you into one of her chairs. Uh, she flies over as a bat and then brings you an apron made of cobwebs. Oh, what a good host. Right? She's she, like, you wandered into my home, but hey, we treat him like family here. Well, you know, she wants she wants to make sure that you're taken care of. She wants to make sure you got your whole like makeover going on. Love it. It's a beauty salon. She cares for her people. Yeah. She asks Lance if he's in a hurry. He says, well, yeah, actually, there's like a crazy guy chasing me. <laughs> actually, there's this guy that's murdered me a whole bunch. And I gotta she, get out of here. She just ignores him and continues on like she's just going to give him a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Fritz comes bursting into the room. Vivi sees Fritz and just goes over. He's like, oh, hey, Fritz, are you here for a sh- uh, hook sharpening? Hook sharpening. And she tells him, well, I'm with another client right now, so I'm going to need you to wait. So she looks at her Iron Maiden in the corner. That's one of those cupboards that opens. It's got all the spikes inside of it. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh. one of those torture devices. Love it. She's like, just go wait in there. And she throws him in there and locks him in while she's, you know, dealing with Lance. What a badass. I have a crush on her. Lance tells her that he doesn't need anything, but she says she knows exactly what he needs. Yeah, she's he needs just going to fucking haircut. She's going to keep ignoring everything he says. He's a weird little ginger. She's like, I can fix this. And then she goes, she does a really good little pun here. And she goes, I'm already really behind. And it zooms in on her butt. Yes. Is that even a pun or is that just a creepy dude thing? I guess it's a creepy... It's a, it's a visual pun. Okay. Yeah. It, that was a pun on the part of the creators because, like, she's not making it. Yeah. She's like, my schedule's crazy. And they're like, in Let's the butt. Let's look at her butt. Or cartoon butts. She wheels Lance up to the mirror and starts messing with his hair. And since she has no reflection... His like hair's his, just floating? His hair's all floating oh, around and stuff. Oh, that's great. I she, love that. She offers him a few different services, shave, manicure, facial. They all have, like, their own challenges when she's going through to do it. Like, she's got a big hook when she comes in to shave you, and you gotta, like, duck at the right time so she doesn't <laughs> cut your head off or anything like that. That's funny. It's funny because each of her beauty devices is more a torture device than it is, like, scissors, That's you know? a commentary. That's someone's wife coming home from a long day and being like, God damn it! <laughs> I just got a wax, motherfucker. You're going down on me tonight. This shit hurt. And he's like, um, can you give me a little more detail? Because I'm writing this scene about this vampire with a butt. With a butt? Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Eventually, Vivi puts you in her fortified beautifier chair. Ooh. It's a big chair that looks like one of those, like, inventor's morning routine chairs. So it's got, like... <laughs> with shit all over it? All the shit are all over it and stuff with, like, automatic versions of, like, daily gizmos. Yeah, like in the um, the dad's chair in Casper. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to go too far out there with that oh, one. Oh, no, no, I got there. Or, like, George Jetson yeah, in the Pee-wee, opening scene. Yeah, Pee-wee, yeah, that, that was another one I was thinking of. Okay, cool. 
So Fritz manages to escape the Iron Maiden, and he attaches a giant electric shaver to his wrist. Totally. He comes running in, and he collides with Vivi, who is pushed into the beautifier chair. Lance turns the chair on, and two giant brushes, like the kind that you would find like a, like a car wash, oh. come down, and they crush her head in and like start spinning extremely fast. Oh no! The whole machine explodes, and Lance runs out in the chaos, and Vivi comes out of it somehow 200 pounds heavier Oh! and looking like an ogre. Oh no. Because that's how makeup works. Yep. I think that was more... It wiped her contour off and all of a sudden she's just like... It went from this commentary about leg waxing to a commentary about how makeup changes you. Uh oh. This is after his wife left him. Yeah, very... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it, I mean, it's hard. Like, you know, I'm like one eyebrow away from being super fucked up looking. Oh, stop. That's true. You're very pretty. It's a pod... That's the reason we're doing a podcast and not a TV show, honey. We have faces for podcasts? I got a face for podcasts. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Well, at least we're both ugly and married to each other. I'm ugly fuck you no i don't mean ugly. i look good when i have both my eyebrows done i'm gonna stop yeah so after running around the castle a bunch more lance finds the classic giant castle trope a hedge maze Ooh. he runs in with fritz hot on his tail now the maze is a motherfucker you have to do it perfectly and it's like that harry potter maze the one from the fourth movie not the fourth book where the maze is constantly trying to kill you right got it <laughs> There's no map. They never show you what the layout of the of the maze itself is. Yeah. But you have to do it perfectly the whole way through. That's amazing. <laughs> and you go through it one screen at a time, and often there's like four options of which direction to go. Oh no. And you're going to see the same backgrounds, the same animations, but that doesn't matter. Right. Because those are not the same locations that you were the last time you saw them. Oh, that's so painful. It's so hard. Is this where you were rage quitting? This is one of the rage quit moments that I had, because you couldn't look up a Let's Play in 1995 yeah. and see how am I supposed to do this. There was no going online to figure out how to finish this off. And knowing you, I don't think you'd have the patience to like go out and find a manual. No, there, they didn't make one. Oh, yeah, I, this game probably wasn't, like, complex enough to, like, Warner them no, they publishing out a book about it. They didn't have the, yeah, the strategy guides. Yeah. No, there was no strategy guide for this. This was, uh -huh. like, I had to wait till now to see what the ending actually <laughs> looks like. <laughs> Finally, Lance reaches the center of the maze, and there's a giant statue of, like, this swamp creature-looking motherfucker surrounded by a fountain. And the fountain tries to kill Lance every which way it can. Eventually, the swamp creature, with his, like, glowing infinity stone in his forehead, like, it's an actual, like, oh. yellow glowing stone in his forehead. Yeah, it's the one that um, Vision has. Right. It, yeah, it's the one for, that Vision has, the yellow one. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... I think that's the mind gem. I think so. I don't know. It doesn't make this guy very smart. So he pukes oh. green acid at Lance, which makes him run. And they do this, like, like, whole cat and mouse thing, you know, hitting, running, hiding, and stuff. Until Lance climbs up on top of his head and rips the Infinity Stone out. Right, that's the power gem. This does nothing. Is this not an MCU project? <laughs> I don't know why he needed to get up there and rip it out. It really just kind of, like, annoys the sea creature <laughs> more than anything. Oh. And the sea creature's huge. He's, like, 25 feet tall. Oh, shit. Like I said, Lance was able to climb up on his head. Jesus. And he's tiny on top of his head. Like, he's climbing around like like the uh, Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Okay? And he's got, like, this big uh, King Triton, or King, what's that guy from Mermaid? King Triton? Yeah. With his trident. I had a trident. There we go. King Triton and his trident. So he's got, like, a trident with him, and Lance grabs onto the trident, and he gets flung, and he get, lands back in the castle. Oh. Which. Cool. You had to go through that entire maze to get back to To get back castle. to square one. <laughs> like college at this point you have to actually return to the witch's lair okay so you go there and it's the exact same scene but it's in a mirror image jesus christ they couldn't even like animate anything differently they're just nothing like, differently fuck it, flip it it's fine cat walks the other way like it's a glitch in the matrix and if you miss this because you thought oh i already did this once before you have to run into that room and grab the eyeball again if you don't, you will not beat the game. Oh. This is something I never knew oh. until now. That sucks. You have to go back 
And there's, like I said, no instructions. Right. There's no prompts to say, hey, maybe this is interesting or like, you Mm-mm. should touch that. And there's, and like later, if you don't have it, there's no hint that you needed it. That's so funny. There's not even, like, a pun of, like, I think you would see this better. Balls. Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Because you need to go back and get this second eyeball. That's horrific. So you have two eyeballs in your pocket that there's been no other collectibles in this game. So you don't have the Infinity Stone anymore? You just have these two loose leaf eyeballs? Oh, this Infinity Stone is the size of your body. You can't carry it. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, this thing that was in his forehead was huge. Got it. Sorry, I, I get how that could be confusing. Yeah. There's been no collecting at any point in this game. Right. The only things you need to collect are these two eyeballs. Two eyeballs. But we don't get to them yet. Okay. Lance runs through the castle some more and eventually finds his way up a massive flight of stone stairs. They, like, spiral up, like, this gigantic room. That's what I imagined. And there's no, like, handrails or anything, you know. It, it, it's the way the castle is, like, on, a, like, a really bad ledge. Everything is just, like, barely holding on, but right. is fully sturdy, obviously. Obvi. And he gets inside this room at the top of the stairs, and there's this, like, Frankenstein's monster kind of creature in there. Okay. And he's basically just a dumb jock. He's Adam. From Buffy. Adam from Buffy. No, but, but he was smart. Okay. Remember, Adam from Buffy was smart. He's dumb. Oh, I he love it. He is really dumb. And he says, it's third down, bases are loaded, and we're pulling the goalie. What? Those are completely different sports. <laughs> every single one of them. They do not relate to each other. Nope. And he chases you around the room, and like every major American sport gets represented in some way. What the fuck? There's a basketball hoop in there. He chases you with a baseball bat. There's tennis rackets. It's, you know. What the shit? Miscellaneous sports. Is he the one that drew the schematics? I don't think so. Here, well, I was thinking Vivi. Okay. She's like the only one that's like mentally capable enough. And she <laughs> wouldn't have helped them draw a cartoon like looking <laughs> crammed out. You know what I mean? Yeah, she doesn't give a fuck. No, she's not involved in that at yeah. all. Yeah, okay. She's like, that's fucking stupid. So this idiot and Lance, uh, they end up on, like, this table and that's got wires attached to it. And Uh Fritz comes in out of nowhere and hoists this table up into the air. So it's that table that, like, Frankenstein's monster was created on, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, where they're like, it's alive! Where he's, like, strapped down and they open up the ceiling and the lightning bolt comes down. That's exactly what ends up happening here is, like, lightning strikes it and everything. And so you end up on the roof of the building on the outside. Okay. Okay? And Lance has to climb even higher for some reason. He's like, oh, we're out here. Let's go higher. Up is the way. With lightning striking and and a lightning storm. I'm in a horror movie. I should go higher. Go higher and closer to the lightning. Yes. That's always what's best in this circumstance. I mean, obviously you escape by jumping off the roof and then barely grabbing onto one little shingle that's like hanging off the side of the roof. Totally. Because that's what the logical next step was going to be. Yep. And the monster gets struck by lightning. So much that his body explodes into little pieces and comes raining down on top of Fritz. And, like, his head lands on top of Fritz's head. And, like, Fritz is wearing the monster's head like a mask. Ew! And, like, you can see his face coming out of the mouth. Oh! Oh, God! (laughs) Ew! Oh! This is, like, why is this, like, weird kids game the goriest one we've done so far? I'm so, like, mortified and, like... But there's no blood. Oh, okay, then. It's animated violence, so it's okay. Jesus Christ. When are we doing Battle Royale, the VR experience? (laughs) I feel like that will still be easier to deal with than this. Lance finds an elevator, and he goes way, way deep down into the base of the mountain that, remember is floating out into nothingness. Right. It's about three feet. Anyway, it doesn't (laughs) matter. Doesn't matter. He's hundreds of feet below the ground. And like a cavern, it reminded me of Scrooge McDuck's vault. Okay. Like that kind of deep if it was empty. (laughs) Just ridiculous. And there's about a thousand steps that go up the cavern, like the zigzagging motion all the way to the top. Okay. Okay. Uh, On those stairs is one continual rug. That goes from the bottom all the way to the top. What a big rug. Right? Really long. Now, in one of the better gags of the game, Lance is at the very bottom, and Fritz is at the very top. Fritz flashes his arsenal of, like, weaponry again, like Machete does. Yeah. 
and Lance looks at him, smiles, grabs the rug at the bottom, and then, like, whips it and makes, like, a wave. Yeah. And Fritz slowly watches as this wave comes up the entire <laughs> zigzag of stairs and then finally reaches him, and it knocks him up in the air. But it's just funny to watch him. He's just, like, watching. He goes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all the way up the and stairs. And he's not moving. And he doesn't move. He doesn't react to it. He's he just, like, oh, that's happening. I'm going to stand here and watch and it. And watch it all happen. So as Talking he's Fritz. falling... Um, he's just, like, dropping shit. Like, most of it's, like, to comedic effect. Like, there's underwear with hearts on them. Aww. A chicken magazine with Vivi's tits on the cover of them. Jesus! Uh, one of the items that he drops is a sword, and Lance picks it up. Oh. This makes Fritz so mad, he attaches a chainsaw to his arm. Right. And so he decides to fight with Lance. So this turns into Ash from Evil Dead... Versus Sir Lancelot. Thir- Sir Lancelot, yeah. Yeah, like, no, no, that wasn't lost on me. But he's, like, fucking literally Ash running around with a chainsaw attached to his hand. But, like, an evil, crazy Ash. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. this fight doesn't go well because Lance takes one swing and Fritz knocks the sword out of his hand. Oh, bud. Now Lance has to make it all the way up these stairs. And at each landing, there is, like, another weapon that Fritz had dropped. So every se- sequence is, like, you gotta fight Fritz again. Fritz is gonna win. You gotta keep running up these stairs. And got it. This is where I kept losing. Okay. I find... I, it, was, it was so hard. Just so annoying to get So annoying. Stairs. And it's, like, 11 or 12 different, like, zigzags you gotta do. So you gotta go through this, like, so many times. Yeah. So finally... Lance makes it all the way to the top of the of the stairs. Yay! And there's like a giant door there, and he goes busting in through the door, and he shuts the door behind him, and it's pitch black in there. Dun, dun, dun. And then like inside, he finds this long ass hallway, a uh, uh, runway of lights that just light up. You know, they just slowly oh, cool. all the way down the whole thing. Yeah. And at the end is Doctor Nero Neurosis. Now he's no longer twelve feet tall. He's now just, the brain is roughly a little bit bigger than what a human head would be. Okay. And there's maybe like a foot of brain stem. Oh. And the jar he's in looks like an, like a blender, I guess you would say. Okay. And so there's just really enough room for his brain, some liquid, and then the top. So it's, it's a much more compact version of that. He's downsized. He's downsized quite a bit. He's like those tiny house people. And then he's got, like, a computer system laid like laid out around him with just, like, buttons and random science shit, like, everywhere. hmm Lance looks at him and calls him no brain, even though he's... All brain. Only brain. Yeah. I think if you wanted to insult him, you'd say, like, no body. Hey, no hands. Right, since this entire thing happened because he needed a pair of hands. Yeah. But no, he wants to insult him for not having a brain, even though he is only brain. Got it. Lance moves quickly down the runway, and Doctor calls for Fritz. Fritz enters the room, and suddenly, he's actually scary to Lance. Oh. Like, the whole time, Lance has been very mocking yeah. to him the whole like, time. Like, hey, fuck you. Hey. Yeah, like, ah, I'm watching you, like, fuck up. Now, Fritz is, like, terrifying to Lance. And they do <laughs> one of those, like, extreme zooms on Fritz that's, like, out of a Red and Stimpy cartoon or Spongebob where you get to see, like, the real detail on the face. Yeah. Like, you see all, like, the... Like the, the pores and fucked up hairs and shit. The blemishes and the eye Ew. boogers and stuff like that. And so Fritz puts every weapon in his arsenal on at once. Oh, great. And he comes charging at Lance and he's firing bullets, lasers, rockets, fire. He's got everything coming at him. And Lance stands perfectly still and starts doing, like, YMCA cheerleader poses. Right. Dodging all the bullets. Totally. Because that's how that works. Yep. So all of this artillery that's going through him is going directly at the Dr. Brain. Oh, good. And the Dr. Brain is sitting there getting shot. And like I said, the actor didn't put a lot of effort into it. He's just like, Fritz. Fritz, no. Stop it. (laughs) Don't do that. Oh, that's amazing. So the top of the water tank blows off, and suddenly Fritz is flying through the air up into the sky, and he lands directly into the tank with the with Dr. Neurosis. Right. Uh, they're both squished in there, like, really tight, and Lance walks up, and he's like, Hey, guys! And he walks over and hits the flush button that, of course, is on the computer. Right. So they swirl around, and they flush, and they go down. That causes everything in the room to explode. 
Oh! And so there's like a little mini mushroom cloud and everything. <laughs> Lance looks around nervously as the entire place is beginning to shake. Right. The camera cuts to outside to like the same like establishing shot that we saw before. Yeah. Except this time, every single one of the spires is exploding. So it's just like boom, 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 boom everywhere on the castle. And only the entrance is left behind at the very end. Okay. And Lance pops up in the foreground. Oh, so we don't even get to see or do the escape. This puts him at about a half a mile away from the castle. Got it. But we never got to see how the fuck he got out he, of there. He's fine. He's a computer genius. And he just looks at the smoldering remains, turns the camera and goes, Wow, cool. Back to work. And he gets in his work van and drives off. A fucking dork. And so then it just closes with a very, like, final black screen and the bloody font words of the end. Jesus Christ. And that's the end of the game. Is it, though? It is. Because I have a lot of fucking feelings. Let's tell me. Well, like, why the eyeballs? That's why he went flying through the air. That's right. So, when you're... Okay, yeah, This the eyeballs come back into play when Fritz is charging you down the hallway. Okay. You have to take the eyeballs and tie the stems, the, like, uh, the eye oh stems together oh. to create... I don't like the word eye stems. The... Let's keep that on record. Okay. Ties them together to make, like, one of those things that where you throw it, it wraps around your legs and trips you. Oh. Like, one of those. Okay. So he throws that at Fritz. That's what causes him to fly into the air oh. and land inside the brain thing. That's right. So I was just waiting for that to happen. It was like, this motherfucker had They to did go come back, back around. Eyeballs. Yeah, they did come back around. They, you have to use them to cause Fritz to trip into the vat. That's horrifying. It is. This game is weird. I don't like it. Not many people did. <laughs> you can find videos of people very frustrated playing this game. Is it? Okay, well, like, levels of difficulty, is it, like, Crash Bandicoot hard, or, like... It's only difficult in that they don't tell you what the fuck you're supposed to do, and their timing is, like, within a half second. Okay. Like, if you don't so do it... it's very sensitive. It, it's to the point where the moment you enter a screen, you better have decided what you're gonna do next. Okay. And... If you don't, you're going to die. Got it. And you're going to die a lot. That sucks. This game's ridiculous. It is. I'd love to see you play it just because of how much Would you, you know? love, like, this style of game to begin with. <laughs> but, like, not this version of that, that style of game. Cause... You're sitting, me staring at my phone screaming, like, oh, no. Well, you know, it's important to return to your roots. Is it? It is. And this is, well, I guess you could go and play, like... Spyro? No, I wasn't talking about that. I meant, like, the other games that were, like... Much better Dragon's Lair oh. <laughs> and Space Ace if you want to go back and like play the real version of what those I was games like, should have been. I played been. Spyro as a child. Yeah, the Spyro is your big one. I love Spyro. Yeah. It's much better than this. Much better than this. It makes me Fritz not... was so cool though as a character. I remember as a kid like seeing the advertisements for this game and everybody in school would like draw Fritz because he was Aww. such a neat looking character. That's cool. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it was like cool character, shit game. That's really too bad. Yeah. Because it was cool seeing this little character with all these different weapons, and they always displayed him with, like, a different weapon and stuff. I don't like that Lance doesn't learn anything. There's no takeaway. No, Lance doesn't grow or anything. Lance is always awesome, will be awesome. What a piece of shit. But, you know, he's just, he's your average computer repairman. I hate him. He's just like John McClane. I'm, I'm, actually, also, I'm a little sad that they don't, they missed the opportunity for him to go in and go, did you turn it off and turn it back on again? Like, <laughs> I, I assume that we were in, in the infancy area of computers, so that wasn't really a thing or right. minimized or whatever, but how delightful would that, that would have be? been really that, good. That could have come back around and been relevant <laughs> all over again. Right, uh, right. That's disappointing. The whole thing. Just wildly disappointing. Wildly disappointing. Yeah, I don't like it. I got really creeped out at a couple pieces. I mean, it's... The animation style is fun. Yeah. The gameplay is not. <laughs> and it's frustrating. Oh. And, you know, it's one of those ones where once you know how to get through it... You can do it. You can do it, and... It's like speedrunning Mario, like, once you know exactly how to jump and when to jump and stuff, you're fine. And then it's like, does that... Is that fun at that point? No. No. Kind of the fun is in the dying over and over and over again. Yeah. And, and like, like, I can appreciate that. Like, a good death is always great. A good death is wonderful. That's why I liked that Friday the 13th game, because it's like... Even if you die, you're looking at it like, oh, that was cool. <laughs> yeah. But the killings are gorgeous. The killings are gorgeous. <laughs> the plot sucks, but the killings are gorgeous. Well, this plot sucked, and I guess we will move on to the next one. The next horrific game. I mean, you know, like, 
As ridiculous as video games are, like, there's some that I root for, even if, like, the plot's ridiculous. It's like watching Mars Attacks and being, like, on board. Right. You know? You're like, well, fuck it. We're just going to have a good time. I'm on board with Mars Attacks. What are you talking about? I haven't seen that in so long. Is it good? It's on HBO Go. We should watch it then. Yeah. All right. HBO Go, please sponsor us. Yeah, that'd be great. So we can watch Mars Attacks. We'd love to watch Mars Attacks more. Yeah. (laughs) Just all the time. (laughs) We'll probably be, like, one of 12 people that you hear say that. And we're going to watch it 13 times. Right. To make up for those other people that are not actually going to watch it. Um, I don't know how the math worked out on that, but I'm going to roll with it. Um, so that's another castle. We're the other castle. And ours is not going to get blown up. No. Hopefully. Goodness. What? Oh, because their castle blew up. I was like, why are you talking? What fuck are you talking God, about? Well, you're talking about blowing up castles. I'm nervous. I don't want our castle to blow up. Well, that's why we keep lids on everything. But our castle will be fine, unlike this castle. Which is why you should always be at the other castle. Yes. I plugged the thing. Um, so come back next time. Come back next time. Tweet us. Let us know if you do have episodes or games that you love that are absolutely bonkers. We'd love to check them out. Um, I'm at Bouncy Andrea on Twitter. And we'll put all the links and stuff in the notes. Please hang out with us online. Yes. Please rate and comment. That helps us. Yes. Like, in big ways. Tell your friends. Tell your friends' friends. Yeah. Hang out with us on a road trip. Let us take you on a road trip. We're going to go on a road trip? With our friends on the internet. Oh, okay. They're going to download us and we'll talk them through the scary nights. That's what you mean, like a road trip. Take us on the road trip. They're not coming with us. I mean, if they're driving, I'm down. Okay. I'll bring snacks. I'm really good at bringing snacks. You are good at snacks. I'm very good at snacks. She she has good snack choices, everybody. It's our house true. always has wonderful snacks. It's true, and I hope your house does too, and we will see you next time at the other castle. All right, Goombas, until next time. Love you guys. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.